Paul Shea, everybody, you're very, very welcome to this special event organized by a volunteer collective known as Irish for the Voice. Um, we are a network and a community of Irish born and Irish diaspora, people of Irish roots and heritage of all shapes, sizes, ages and colors that have come together over the last number of weeks to really stand and honor this moment that we're in in this land of Australia, a land that has welcomed and hosted so many of us from our homelands. And as we think of homelands, we think of all the country and nation that each of you joining here, and we pay our respects to all your elders, to the elders of past, present and emerging and we will have elders with us momentarily and including um, some very respected elders, some emerging elders uh, from Australia and from all different countries and indeed from Ireland. And we pay respects to our own Indigenous elders and our own traditions in Ireland as well. So it feels like a very important coming together as we think about our own history as a people, but also our role uh, which sometimes has been uncomfortable to look at where some of our people have been involved in dispossession or oppression. But we want to really honour the struggle, the fight, the quest for peace, the quest for justice, the quest for dignity, the quest for reconciliation and the quest for healing. And that's the energy that we're coming into tonight. And that's the energy that we're going to bring into Saturday to push this over the line, to make this a moment in history. and. Beyond that, because whatever happens on Saturday, this work needs to continue. And it's so important that the Irish Australian community and indeed people of all migrant communities and for those that are not indigenous are all from migrant communities when we look at it. And it's important that we step up and really look at our history, face our history and build a new future together. So. To get us moving, we do have a very, very fast paced event. I, I actually just noticed a tiny bit of an Australian accent in my voice there. I've only been in Australia nine months and I caught myself saying something there. So it's, you're, you're all rubbing off on me. Thank you. Um, but we do have a fast paced event. Um, I would love to hear from each and every speaker and performer for half an hour, an hour, a full day the magnitude uh, of the people we have here is second to none. It's so wonderful. I think we need go, we're going to need to do this event in person uh, somewhere. We're going to need to rent a, a, a field or a, a auditorium or something soon and bring people together for a celebration and a celebration of people power. Um, a big welcome also to people joining us on Facebook Live or on facebook.com forward slash Irish for the voice. And you're more than welcome to share the link amongst your friends and family so they can join us too. And a special hello to everyone joining us from Ireland as well and indeed from around the world because this is now an international gathering, an international gathering for the voice and for justice. So to get us moving, I'm going to introduce a wonderful uh, poet based in Sydney from the west coast of Ireland. Uh, she's so esteemed with multiple awards to her name, multiple publications, is just finishing her PhD, I believe, and a really important topic as well. And she really captures a lot of the spirit of what this event is about tonight. So please welcome Anne Casey. The Hello everyone, I'm coming to you from unceded Camaragal lands. Quick as more huge thanks to Rory and team for bringing us together to express our solidarity and support for Australia's First Nations people. I will be voting yes on Saturday. As we each contemplate what this moment means in the history of our nation, I would like to share a poem with you that I wrote. On the eve of All Hallows Eve, we sit together in a biting wind at Sydney Cove while you talk of thin places and we agree that this is one of those filled with the spirits of your people who had lived here for millennia and my people who had come and gone. I say, my words carried on the bitter breeze in my native tongue that was torn from my people 
along with our true names, stories, songs, one in three of my people perishing during our own enslavement on a far-flung coast. From my lips to the ears of your ancients, I implore, as we sit together in a biting wind at Sydney Cove, while you talk of thin places, and we agree that this is one of those. Those words in our native language, which was outlawed during our own colonization, Tugimomos the Bahianori, a V Augusta Aun Fos, mean I give tribute to your elders who were and who are here still. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anne. Um, thanks so much. So we're going to move on now and um, we will go to um, some of our wonderful. Uh, I'm just looking here. We have a big lineup here, so just bear with me. The technology will hopefully, uh, I'm praying to the technology gods, but I, I think we're going to be okay. Um, so um, can, can Aunt, Auntie Kathy Donnelly here and Auntie Elaine and Auntie Jenny, you're all very welcome. Um, Auntie Kathy Donnelly, I just met yesterday for the very first time on the telephone and we felt like it felt, I hope you feel the same, Kathy. Uh, it'd be awkward if, if you don't, but I felt like an old friend uh, meeting, you know, and uh, you were, um, it just felt like there was a connection there. And obviously at this moment in time that we're all feeling a particular energy at the moment. And I think there's also a lot of kind of sadness in the air. There's some anger in the air. There's some confusion in the air. And then there's also a kind of tinkling of hope floating around. So I want to ask you each, you know, maybe tell us a little bit uh, where you are. I know you do great work with Wesley Mission, Kathy, and your work with the uh, um, in the Darren country there in Western Sydney. Uh, but I'd love to know how you're feeling and also maybe share with the others what your hopes are for the coming days and indeed for the future. Thank you. Um, oh, we have adopted you already. As you Great. said, um, you could sound, um, feel a little bit of your um, Australian voice coming through. So, <laughs> thank, you. <laughs> so thank you so much. Um, and thank you for setting this up as, as well. So um, for everyone out there, my name is Cathy Donnelly and I'm a proud Duralaroi woman from Camilleroy Nation, far west New South Wales, but living on Darrick and working on Darrick country. I'm here with my aunties from Barbane Aboriginal Cooperation in Mount Druitt. So I'll hand it over to you, Aunty, oh, okay. to introduce yeah. yourself. Okay, my name's... Elaine Gordon, I come from the Barkindji Nation, uh, Western New South Wales. I choose to live here on the Dari Country um, now and um, have been for many, many years. I feel like I'm just part of it all of Western Sydney now. And yeah, and it's, it's, it's an honour to be here tonight. And it's, and it's, it's a real honour to know that there's people out there from the other side of the world that are. Um, you know, are there for us because it means a lot to us that, um, you know, because I feel like we've never had a fair go and, um, yeah, and, I, and this was going to be our chance, I think, to, um, yeah, um, you know, get uh, to take over our own lives and our own um, well-beings and, and everything. And um, I do really hope we get through it would be a real uh, pleasure to, to be part of the Yes Voice. And if we don't, well, it, you know, we'll just live another day, but we'll still fight for our rights and for who we are. And, and yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Hello, everyone. My name's Jenny Epsworth. I'm a Limba Murawari um, woman from out north, northwest, farm, northwest New South Wales. Kathy and I share um, our grand, you know, my mother and Kathy's grandmother. They came from another mission um, uh, in the 40s and they were sent to the Brewarana mission. So um, but we decided that we wanted to come and live here in this country here on uh, uh, Barrick land. We, you know, we, we, we just love the being here. Um, and um, I'm pretty. Uh, 
kind of nervous, you know, uh, mm. what the result is going to be. But I, I'm just really overwhelmed and I feel really happy about the support that there are people and there is a lot of good people in in Australia, you know, despite a lot of the negative mm. uh, things that have been floating around. But we know, you know, we, we can remember when the people walked over the bridge in 2000, you know, mm. so, you know, there's a lot of, and people came in the first, uh, the big referendum, to, you know, so that we can be counted mm. in the votes. But, and I know there's a lot of animosity and, and, and mm. uh, it's really um, sad that we should have to be doing this. Um, I don't think Australia has grown up. Um, and there's just so many, it's very heart wrenching to hear what's going on. And, mm. But, you know, I really appreciate and love all the people that are walking with us. And mm. thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Thank you for sharing all that. And um, we appreciate that it is a, a difficult and emotional time for people. Um, we, we're getting a lot of chat. Uh, people are using the chat facility on Facebook and in Zoom. And a lot of people are sending you lots of love from all over uh, this land and indeed all over the world. So people do have your backs in the coming days, but also beyond. And you've got a new Irish community and a new Irish family that you can draw on for whatever struggles are to come. And hopefully we, this will be the birth of future collaborations in music, poetry, and maybe some dancing and some song along the way, because I think we could all do it a bit of a party at some point in the near future as well. Oh, and speaking of which, I believe it's somebody's birthday coming up. I almost forgot there. <laughs> <laughs> Well, The Voice is going to be my birthday, so that's happening on Monday. So I'm hoping to wake up and, um, you know, um, yeah, and I've got um, this beautiful birthday wish. But, but um, you know, I suppose for us, for me and the aunties, the reason why we're voting yes is because our parents, uh, our mums and dads didn't have a voice yeah. and they are their voices now. And, you know, for me, I want to um, give... Um, my children, my grandchildren and my great-grandchildren a voice for this country. Um, I believe this is our opportunity to take this now and that I don't think that we will get another one regardless of all the promises that's out there um, with, you know, um, the opposition and that saying that, you know, if the no vote gets in that they will do another referendum. But I just think that that's a bluff. I yeah. believe you know, with everyone, the support that we have out there from everyone who's watching today and all the people that we've spoken to from, you know, the Indians, the um, Turkish, um, the Kurdish, um, there's just so many. i hoping and praying that with your help and support that you will get us over the line on Saturday. So my heart goes out to every one of you and thank you from the bottom of our hearts, you know, uh, because we are so with this and with everyone else. And thank you for marching and walking and being our voices as well. Thank you and God bless you all. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Lots of love to you all and have a wonderful birthday. Talk soon. Thanks again. Thank you. Okay, folks, so um, we'll just take a little moment as well, because um, again, I referenced the depth of the emotion connected to the issues that we're talking about. This is not just po policy and politics. This is about people's lives. And I think it's also a very difficult week on our planet with the, the mayhem in Israel and now in Gaza, the injustices and dispossessions and oppression that is occurring there and indeed around the world. So. It's a tough time for us humans, and um, I think we need to just find it in ourselves to care for ourselves and to be kind to ourselves and to take a break and tune out when we need to take a deep breath. And at any point during this event as well, if you just need to, to switch off or check out and go have a cup of tea or a rest, then by all means, please do that. And so speaking on the, the, the whole concept of you know, mental health and, and well-being and, and that sort of human spirit. Our next guest is very esteemed in that realm, to say the least. Uh, Professor Pat McGarry is a great Irish man and also you might say an Australian man now. I'm not sure, does he call himself an Australian man? But he's certainly an Australian of the year. 
recipient. Uh, he's well known for his work at the Origin uh, organization at the University of Melbourne and the Celtic Club as well, amongst other achievements. So you're very welcome, Pat. I've uh, heard many things about you over many years and I've never actually got to meet. So uh, hello um, on our virtual meeting and uh, I'll hand over the mic to you for a few minutes to share what's on your mind in these uh, with the coming days ahead. Thanks, Pat. Well, thanks, Rory, and, and a huge thanks to you for inviting me. It's, it's just I can already feel the love in, in the in, in on the on the on the Zoom room um, here, and, and um, it's so so good to connect with everyone everyone here. I mean, I, I don't know, like you say, you say there's so many emotions this week, really, you know, um, and that theme that you just mentioned of dispossession, you know, that's the thing that's stuck in my mind. You know, <clears throat> I was I came to Australia when I was 15. And um, it was in 1968, and it was only a few months after the the, uh, the 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 referendum that actually gave, you know, I suppose um, it wasn't exactly the vote, but it recognised uh, the First Nations people as almost as human beings in this country. And I, I remember <clears throat> not only being shocked by that, but but I went to school, and the way that the boys in the school that I, I went to spoke about Aboriginal people was just a disgrace really and i felt it at the time it wasn't like looking back and thinking yes that wasn't that wasn't okay i felt it at the time it was shocking um and and yet there were no aboriginal people to be seen you know that they were hidden at that time you know uh, at least in newcastle where we we emigrated to and um <clears throat> i remember thinking this is not much different from south africa this country actually uh, which obviously had apartheid at the time and and um, over the years, I, I've seen this growth of respect and, and, and finally some of the truth telling that's coming out about what actually happened to Indigenous people. And it's just the same thing that happened to us, you know, in the past in Ireland. Um, exactly the same methods, exactly the same, you know, uh, ethnic cleansing sort of approaches. These, I know this is strong language and probably not great for trying to heal and unify here, but that's, I'm just telling you what's on my mind and uh, the way I've uh, the way I've thought about this issue over the years, and I felt a great affinity for First Nations people because of that. And I know that Irish immigrants to Australia were part of that process because you know they were sort of <clears throat> settlers as well, and and so we're not we're not uh, innocent of, of some of the crimes that have been committed here. But but um, because we have this sensibility, you know, as a people, and I remember going back to Ireland. Um, about 12 years ago as an, the first time i had lived in ireland as an adult for, for a sabbatical period and um i remember thinking you know being an exile you have this idealized image of ireland and how, and how amazing irish people are in terms of their resilience and their fighting spirit but i could still see the echoes of colonialism in ireland 100 years after independence you know in, in the sense that people were still deferential to authority and and uh and there was a, some kind of residual features of that colonial, and maybe even in the last ten years, that's been overcome because Ireland is is um, when you see the young Irish people coming to Australia now and going back there now, um, it's 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 a changed country. It's it's a radically changed country from over the last two or three decades, and so maybe we're finally overcoming that. But then you think about people in Australia, the Indigenous people who have been dispossessed here, how are they going to overcome that? How is that going to be done? And you'd have to say the voice uh, and the Uluru statement from the heart is such an incredibly sort of mature and, and, and loving way to do it almost. And it's, and it's always being spurned by, by the re residual rump of racism in this country, and that, which is definitely less than it was, but it's obviously still there. And the big tragedy here is that by it being politicised along political lines, it's given permission for that. It's given a sort of a, an acceptance and a permission for that to kind of be acceptable again. That that sort of those attitudes and on on social media, like we released a statement this week on behalf of all the former Australians of the year that that we could contact, and every single one of them said yes, that they supported yes, which says a lot about 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 Australia in a positive way. But the kind of stuff that you see on social media when that came out was was just stunning really in, in its primitive racism and and um and i, I so that you had to have to have concern for the, for the country going forward <clears throat> if that cannot be 
dealt with by the political leadership in, and by, by all of us, actually, in, in a way. And, and you mentioned the Middle East, Rory, and that's another intractable situation, a bit like Northern Ireland used to be. Um, and um, you see this kind of, um, I don't know, uh, uh, um, in, in, you know, you would think that sort of scenario where babies and Palestinian, Israeli babies and Palestinian children are being killed, innocents, total innocents. You would think that would prompt a reaction from the political leadership around the world of Absolutely. we must we must mo 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 mobilize a peace movement here. We must. This cannot be allowed to happen. But instead, it, um, the political leadership is being polarized around one side or the other, which is incredibly f a, mass a big fail of, of of leadership all around the world. Um, Instead of going for humanity here, we're going for tribalism. And so we've got to get better than that. And, and Australia is such a great country. It could be so much better. And I really hope that we can get over the line on Saturday. But so thank you all for listening. And well, it's sad, a pleasure to be with you all tonight. Thanks so much, Goramagos. Thanks, Pat. Really appreciate that. And uh, thanks for joining us. And best wishes for all your work. Um, so um, I'm going to go to Meriki next. Uh, there you are. Uh, I think. She's at a big event somewhere. Um, you look like you're on the move there, Meriki. Uh, you're very welcome. Hi. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having so you're, me. You're joining us from NARM. Yes. Can you hear me properly? Yeah, I think we're okay. You're, 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 remind me, are you at an event or a rally or something right now? I'm at a community event in NAM yep. um, with mob from all around the country, uh, all around the state yep. um, for the Aboriginal Justice Forum. And it's youth led. So um, here talking to community about the referendum, but also things that, um, that are really important to us in connecting. Okay, so, so yeah. you, 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 like, you came on my radar during the referendum. Obviously, you were in the media and so on. And, you know, people might say that you're, I don't know what they would say you are, but like it, it felt to me that you're a grassroots activist and uh, from the younger, I suppose, uh, generation uh, and you're very much um, a leader in that field. Can you tell me what the general mood is at the moment amongst uh, the folk that you're organising with? Um, so, look, there are a lot of different perspectives. Like many families and many communities, we're not a monolith. Um, I came from a position of no. And I've recently changed my position and, you know, I feel really passionate about coming to speak about that. Mm. Um, and for me, a yes vote um, is a vote for humanity. I think I don't want to wake up on Sunday and um, feel like I had anything left. And, I, and I've been thinking about this for a very long time and I've spoken to people I really love and respect and critically mulled over this. And, you know, I think, and it's okay to change your mind, I think, there are probably a lot of people in my position that have changed their mind and um, I think people are stuck and probably scared to change their mind after verbalising that they had a position of no. But um, I think it's really important to, to get the message across to people that it shouldn't be a message of yes and no. We all mm. want the same thing ultimately and we were forced into this possession of yes and no. And, um, yeah, and I think to me there are... I don't want to get into the cr critiques um, over it now. We're here, we're two days out, and um, for me, a yes vote is for humanity. And, you know, you spoke about what's going on abroad um, to the Palestinian people, and I think right now we need to feel some humanity and um, the Australian people will go to vote on whether they care about Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. And... Um, I hope it's a vote for humanity and mm. it's a vote for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. Yeah, thank you so much, Marky. Uh, could you just briefly comment on um, the work that is required after the referendum, regardless of outcome? Look, we've been um, organising in our communities for um, such a long time. And I was speaking to an auntie when I drove down from Sydney to Melbourne where I stayed at her house. She said we're so tight. She, she worked her whole entire life, she just retired. Uh, and she said, I said, Auntie, you would have seen so many no's in your lifetime. She said, yeah, we're tired of it, but we'll keep going. Um, but, yeah, the older, you know, the older people in our generation have seen so many more no's than us and so many, you know, they would have seen the, um, you know, the abolition of ATSIC and many other different bodies mm. and defunding of such good 
programs and, and, and advisors. Yes, it is just an advisor, but it's, we, there, there's so much opportunity. If you look at what's happening um, with the treaty, um, with the Victorian treaty um, body, uh, you know, it's a representative body. It's voted on by Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people and the opportunity, what we've seen just from this small body in such a small time has been huge. And so I see the opportunity. I believe in the opportunity um, for yes, and it's a yes um, for opportunity and humanity. But also I want us to continue to organise and not lose faith. Even if it's a no, we'll come back together. Um, I'll fight. I'll stand with my brothers and sisters on the streets again regardless of how we chose to, to, to vote in this election and will continue to fight for sovereignty um, as we have from the first sunrise. Beautiful. Thank you so much. And um, in, in the comments, the word courage has come up so many times. And I know sometimes, you know, it can be hard to sort of take that word on, but um, people are sort of using that a lot about you and about you know, those that have been in the fight for a very long time. So we salute you and we take inspiration from it and hopefully can honour that courage with our own act, activism and actions. So thank, thank you, you so Marie. much. Everyone, let's get as many votes as we can over the line on Saturday. Take care. Let's thank do you. it. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Okay, folks, so we're going to keep moving on. Obviously, as I mentioned at the beginning, very difficult to um, be so brief with speakers. It feels a bit unfair. Um, one of the reasons we decided to have very brief slots was to be respectful and mindful that it is a difficult week and a very busy and demanding week, especially for campaigners. So the ask was to just have a short speaking slot. Um, but as I said, it, uh, it's a difficult one because these are very wise and knowledgeable people. Um, someone that has been at the forefront of making, um, I suppose, cross-cultural connections and solidarity over the last decade, uh, particularly through music and the arts, and not, ex not just that, but, uh, as, you know, particularly through songwriting and story and music and uh, bringing people together in community is another, actually, there's a very West Coast of Ireland theme here of County Clare. Uh, so I think she's a Clare woman, but she's kind of a Galway woman as well. And that is Anya Tyrrell, who's up in Bunjalung country with me, actually, around the corner. We're about five minutes away from each other. You're very Thanks. welcome, Anya. Thanks, Rory. And uh, even though it's a um, short spot for music, he, he's, uh, they requested a track of mine, which is quite a big track so just a bit of a warning there and at the end i'll do another song where we'll all come together and you know sing along and have a moment but um i suppose this song is fitting because it came from other moments of activism and um my journey to it well it's misha only Trail. my name is only Trail, and I, I am from county clare in galway and i come from a family of musicians who have used music dance and, and arts um, to speak to uh, many political things over the years and I'm very proud of that. And my journey to play music in this country actually, lovely mentor of mine Shane Howard is in here tonight and, um, and, and accidentally being Irish it put me onto world stages where I accidentally ended up being on uh, stages with indigenous musicians as well. It's where they put those of us that they could find fit anywhere else which was quite ironic because the indigenous singers should have been on the whole stage and the rest of us should have been on the world stage, you know. But um, yeah, in Journey of Playing Music here, there's a track I sang that wrote that um, I was asked to sing at the Black Lives Matter March here on Bunjalung Country a couple of years ago that spoke about our shared versions of colonization, I suppose. And at that time, the request for me to sing that was because us as as uh, white people can do some of the heavy lifting in terms of being able to lean in and have conversations from where we're from with people who, who are from the same places as us. And sometimes it's easier to get those messages across. But when I sang that song, uh, pictures went online and I actually got a lot of online abuse over standing up for Black Lives Matter March. And um, the comments were quite interesting in that they, a few of them were saying that they had Irish heritage and couldn't understand why I was standing up for that. And um, that, that kind of took me by surprise. And it, but then it made sense, you know, the English school system is what came over here. So there's a lot of 
people with generations back of Irish heritage who might not know exactly their story and their history. So this song came through for that. And um, at the time that it came through, I didn't really know what to do with it. And I sent it on to two of my beautiful um, musician friends, Dobby and Emily Waramara, First Nations singers. And, and they said, well, well, you have to release it, you know. And there it was, you know, the line in the sand. And it has brought me a lot more <laughs> online abuse. But uh, at the time of release, my my plan with this track was if it just had one person lean in a little bit further and that's what we can all do as Irish people on this land whether we're here generations back or we've just arrived we we have the ability to do that and um it did in you know and it has done for many years of playing it so yeah it's a big one so hold on tight but by the end um yeah we'll have a sing-along together for sure So many now Irish gather round the fire I call upon you now Reignite the flame required Bundukasi and Clive Sellers Leave amid earth and niche No longer can we agree to disagree If you claim any ounce of Irish ancestry I'm calling on you, 30% of this so-called Australian population to ignite the fire in you from past generation. You were shipped here through waves of famine and rebellion. Your DNA did not drown. You are the survivors of oppression. That ancestral voice inside you and me needs some awakening. But as I walk this land, my God, I hear your ancestors. They're screaming, they're screaming. They didn't have the chance to scream out for their own injustice. They silently watched their own fall. Please be the voice that they lost. And please do not tattoo that leprechaun on your skin. Or use our nation as an excuse for another drink. Those Irish jokes, you know the ones, they're not a badge of honor. They're a systematic abuse as attempt at humor. Your Irishness is not the green that you garnish on St. Patrick's Day. You've been sold that so your cellular memory may not resurface in this way. And please do not think that because three generations back you come from Cork that I'm your Irish girl, therefore I'll be what your Australian Irishism expects. And you do not get to call me your Irish sister. If your call also tries to inform me that all lives matter, and you certainly have no right to have our grow on your career if you cannot recognize that the killing of black bodies is a disease. A disease kind of like the potato blight. I know you know you investigated that and learned that sometimes people take history and rewrite, rewrite it, let their narrative reign supreme, and they teach it on and on it goes. And this we know, so now we know what a little neither always was and continues to be indigenous genocide. When your ancestors passed, were once crushed by the very same empire. To more, one million starved to death on Irish land, choked by the crown's greedy hand. Two million more as refugees, discarded as traditional landowners, removed from country. And does this not sound familiar? On to more. Is this not the same simply said a cry from our indigenous brothers and sisters? Can we please not be choked, winning crown hands? Can we please not be choked off our native lands? You're the daughters of rebels. You are the sons of poets. Remember who you are. Your ancestors, they know it. Because you of only one should understand these wells of stolen generations. Because they practice that shit on your great great grandmother's generation. Her grace schemed away to ship off our fertile eight year old girls, enslaved to ex convicts to use as their populating whores. Coffin ships so only with a land with fighter with 10 family body. That's 50%, which is more likely indigenous to rest than die in custody. And do you not hear that ancestral cry through your DNA? 
Do you not hear your grandmother's sisters, brothers lost in this way? The fever of family systematically torn apart, words deep in your veins. Do not turn away when we're all once entangled in the same chains. And you do not get to sing our songs, lamenting of generations of children. If you cannot sing for this land's Banduka Sock Spirits kindred. And yes, I can hear it, it's true. The Irish were also enslaved, and the no blacks, no dogs, no Irish attitudes at times remains. And yes, once we were caged and chained in the same prison, and we were dispossessed and beaten by the same British colonialism. But there came a day, a day where your white skin did become your privilege. Your accent slightly faded in your Irishness, I'm half forgiven. And I know that the cost is that your ancestors had to hide the culture. But in return, they were given the keys to climb the white man's ladder on the rungs of the backs of their indigenous cellmates. That was the only way for your families to carve out their safe space. Become the colonizer or die. And although you've been taught you were the good colonizer, that's a fucking lie. There's no such thing. The colony has to be torn apart. I'm calling on you, I'm saying it's your duty to take part. The indigenous are only 3% of this population. Those claiming Irish are 30%. Together, 33 and a third makes us a fucking revolution. You're the daughters of rebels. You are the sons of poets. Remember who you are. Your ancestors, they know it. You're the daughters of rebels, the sons of poets, remember who you are. We call you now, Gleave me dirt and ish. Oh, we call you now. So I demand you feel into your genetic coding. The same one you claim makes you cry when you hear me singing. Feel into your feet as the top of the kyolog is crack. And remember your ancestors' past were once crushed under the same union jack. The tears shed from your ancestors' stories. I demand you hear the same cries and the modern indigenous imploring. Shame, 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 it has taken us this long. But unraveling this hard colonization, it holds on strong. You are our lost Irish sons and daughters. The daughters of rebels, sons of poets, you were the agitators. Once silence, you now have a voice, and I'm begging you, use it louder. And I promise you'll make all in Ireland and your ancestors even prouder. The last few years, we've danced long forgotten jigs every time Ireland launched itself forward, unshackling, voting yes to freedoms by letting the truth be heard. Your truth has always been woven between these two shores. We send you strength, and Clive Solace is yours. So whatever percentage of you feel Irish in your genetic claim. Honor Ireland by launching this land forward in yours in our name. Let us dance and dance again, but this time alongside our freedom to the stalemates, allies we from the start to so-called Australia tried to re-educate. So I summon you now as Irish, get around the fire. I call upon you now to reignite the flame now required. You're the daughters of rebels. You are the sons of poets. Remember They know it. You're the daughters of rebels, the sons of poets. Remember who you are. You're our daughters, you're our sons. Remember who you are. We call you now. Leave me there to niche. Oh, we call you now. Leave me there to niche. We call you now. for Saturday. Thank you so much, Anya. You'll be back to us uh, at the end of the event to sing us out again. So thanks so much. That was quite something. Um, okay, folks, I think I need a, a moment after that. Uh, you probably feel similar. That was serious power and energy and force coming through. I think somebody um, commented saying, let's make a revolution. Well, yeah, absolutely. I hear words like power, passion, phenomenal, warrior, woman, unreal. Um, so you're getting lots of great comments in there, Anya, and I think we always need a soundtrack to the revolution, and the music has always been with us in that, in this land and in our own land back in Ireland. Um, 
So um, we're going to move along now and we have a Member of Parliament for New South Wales who's well known as an independent member also for his campaigning on marriage equality and indeed many of us were involved in the Irish campaigns around marriage equality. I also know him from his work in gambling reform and taking on the obscene and I would say corrupt industry, the gambling industry that has polluted Australia and particularly New South Wales. I'll try and stop myself at that because I could go off on one a little bit more. And he's also been doing amazing work on the referendum, particularly outreach with migrant communities as well. So I'll welcome Alex Greenwich. Welcome, Alex. How are you doing? Hi, folks. Thank you so much for having me. And congratulations on doing this awesome uh, Irish for Yes campaign. I'm joining you from Gadigal land. Um, and I'm really proud to be wearing my Yes t-shirt today um, and, and throughout what has been, what has been a, uh, an inspiring campaign, what has been a really tough campaign. Um, and in many ways, it has some strong similarities with the marriage equality um, public vote that we had five years ago, which we learned so much from the Irish campaign for marriage equality from your public vote process. Um, you know, the, the, the similarities are, we're voting on something that's gonna move our country forward. Um, we're voting on something that will create Australia as a, a, as a more equal and fairer place for everyone, especially Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. Um, but more importantly, Writing yes on Saturday, October 14 is an honest thing to do. Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people are our First Nations people. Um, we would we benefit from learning from their 65,000 years of, of custodianship. So I, I've been really excited to, to talk to people right across New South Wales, throughout Sydney, doing the phone banking, speaking to multicultural communities, um, and, and, and people are excited to move Australia forward. So. In the time we have left between now and Saturday, it's going to be so important not to be distracted by the noise and negativity that is out there, but focus on the invitation that we have from Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people um, to take hold of this opportunity and, and to vote yes. Um, th this is something that, that will bring Australians together. You know, I'm, I'm a member of a, of a parliament um, and so often we make laws that impact the lives of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, but we don't listen to them. We don't consult with them. So making sure we, we bake that process into our constitution is so important. It will lead to better policies, better outcomes, uh, and ultimately a better country. Um, so if I can encourage everybody here to do whatever they can between now and Saturday to move the country forward, engage with friends, have some of those difficult conversations that I know Irish people are really good at having. You're, you're some of the best people at having difficult conversations and, and convincing people to change their mind. Um, ultimately, um, th this is a real important opportunity for our country, um, not just for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders, but for all Australians to move us forward. Thanks so much, Alex. Appreciate your time and energy on this and good luck in the coming days of the campaign and take care. Thank you. Thanks again. Bye-bye. Okay, so uh, thanks for all the comments coming in on um, on the chat on Zoom. We did have a technical glitch that we spotted just a while back on the Facebook stream, but it is streaming on Facebook now. You can, if anyone wants to hop over there and share the link, uh, if you feel so inclined, but don't feel like getting distracted by that, that's, that's perfectly fine. Uh, we have Rachel and lots of our great speakers waiting, and I appreciate your patience. Um, so we're going to move on now and we have, I, I keep using the word esteemed, but it, it's completely valid and justified in every instance. And in the next instance, uh, a world renowned playwright and novelist and writer and thinker, uh, Thomas Kennelly, who's a Booker Prize recipient amongst many others for his book Schindler's Ark, which became Schindler's List. Uh, and multiple other um, books and novels, including one about the famine and very much has been an amazing ambassador for Irishness and Irish culture and connection, but the link between our two lands. And he's been very strong and outspoken during this referendum. I saw him as part of the writers for The Voice and he wrote a very strong piece in The Guardian that's worth looking up. Uh, so I'm going to invite um, Thomas onto the screen now. We need to get you to unmute there, Thomas. Um, you're muted, so I need you to get to check the unmute button. Yeah. Does that do it, young it man? It does indeed, yeah. young man. <laughs> Thank you. 
Uh, well, thank you for including an elder like me tonight. I can remember uh, uh, it, when there were Thungudi kids in Kempsey who used to go to town Friday afternoon coming down the Maclay River from Gren Hill to Kempsey. They had to be back in their own camp, Green Hill, at six o'clock. Uh, otherwise, the full majesty of the law of the supposed crown uh, descended upon them. And uh, I cannot but vote, having seen that, having gone out to collect Aboriginal waste with my uh, uncle, the dunny truck driver, I saw as a child uh, something that amazed me. I tried to work out why my uncle could take Aboriginal waste, but Aboriginals couldn't sit in the pictures with us. This was not a moral question. It was the sort of confused question children raise. I've done a little uh, rap, if you can imagine something as ridiculous from someone my age, uh, called Don't Go Saying No. It's addressed to my generation, which I'm sad has been a bit of a write-off, generally. Uh, I don't think we should leave the boulder of no standing in the middle of the stream as we leave, cross the sticks and go to the other side. I say don't go saying no, no sour negatives will suit the coming days. No is a gate locked for two and a half centuries. And if it's defeated, if it's not open Saturday, may never be opened again. No is a do not enter sign when only entry will work. No is a barbed wire fence with no light either side. No is the sound of sneers and of invasions boots. We must not leave my generation, this earth, with the no stain on our lips, as simple as that. This is what the Aboriginals have, um, have told us they want in Congress at the heart of our country in Uluru, which is connected by a long sun line to where I am tonight in, uh, in uh, Gaimai territory, Gaimai people uh, on North Head. Uh, for me as a white Australian, the importance of our pre-European settlement, our pre-settler settlement has become greater and greater as time has gone on. So let us have yes on our lips. Yes is a kindly river in an equal land. Yes is the close of fight and peace as planned. Vote yes and end the fatal wars of weapons and of laws. Say yes and bless the field where seed is cut. Say yes and shame the bullets of the past. Say yes, old woman and old bloke. At last put out the fires, the haters stoke. While all the normal talk jocks tell you, wait. Ask what they have to gain through their stale hate, because they live off us all versus them, not off you and me in equal status of the truly free. In saying this to uh, my uh, white and Aboriginal Australian friends, I want to say, vote yes, make an old man legitimate for the first time in his own country. Until we have voted yes, until we have sat at the same table, until we've shared the table of the Commonwealth, until the kids beyond the gate in Kempsey have the same lifespan as me. Only yes will do, only yes will bridge that gap. It is what the people want. Don't listen to the schemers. Follow your first impulse when this was announced. It was a damn good impulse and it was yes. My respects to the Gay Michael people of the northern beaches of Sydney who have so enriched my life here and to the unforgettable the Thungudi people of the Maclay Valley in New South Wales, whose land I was raised on. Thank you.
Wow. Well, there's thunderous applause rolling out, Thomas, as you can imagine. Uh, well, I hope, hope you can imagine, but it's, it's, there's, people are quite stunned by that. And uh, somebody is saying you've still got it. Well, uh, you absolutely still have it. Can we get you into politics? You're not interested in that uh, career change? <laughs> <laughs> no, hard well, enough to write. I couldn't destroy myself <laughs> by writing books, so I, I said, I want to try politics. Well, that, you've still got great fire, Thomas. Thank you so much for bringing that in and sharing that with us. And uh, we're going to move along and keep that flame lit. Um, take care, Thomas, and best of luck with all the, the great writing and the great words that you've been sharing. Um, okay, so... Um, Speaking of legends, um, yeah, it feels like uh, we're, we're just being spoiled, really, with the, the beauty and breadth and depth of what we have and who we have here tonight. And we have another Australian legend, uh, Irish Australian legend, by the name of Shane Howard, well known for his work with Guana and Solid Rock and many, many other things, but also um, consciousness in his songwriting and in his solidarity of standing with causes and struggles and bringing music to shine a light. And uh, I just got his email newsletter today or yesterday saying he's going on tour in Ireland. So I'm giving you a plug there, Shane, for your Irish tour. With, uh, Mary, you're going to visit Mary Black, I think, who's a, a great Irish legend. Uh, you're muted there, so I'll get you to unmute. Yes. Yep, yep. Uh, that is correct. Uh, that's correct, Rory, yes. Uh, in a, actually, next week. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Well, uh, I can't I speak, speak anymore anymore because it reverbs, reverbs when you when you're, 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 you're sound on. So I'm so going to hand, hand, hand it over to you. Yeah. Thank you, Thank Shane. You, Shane. Thanks, Thanks for joining us. us. Um, hello, everyone. Um, Nat Moa from Gunditjmara country, from Peak Wurrung, actual tribal country. Uh, Peak Wurrung is kelp lip. It's uh, saltwater country where we are in southwest Victoria. Um, I guess uh, as the great-grandson of um, uh, Irish migrants who came here in the wake of Ngurta Moor, the Great Hunger, um, and as a descendant, a survivor, uh, a descendant of survivors of that Great Hunger where a million and a half people starved to death at least, and uh, maybe many more, um, maybe double that, migrated out of Ireland at the time. The co and this was the direct consequence of um, the colonial imposition over several hundred years um, uh, by the same colonial authority. Um, and I know what it's like, um, what that means as it resonates down the, the generations um, for all of us, for growing up here as a, a kid, um, we knew we were second class citizens in this part of the world and we knew Aboriginal people were a step below us again. That was the reality, a large Aboriginal population here. Um, all of us of Irish descent, um, in fact anyone in this country who has had to uh, whose ancestors have had to go through that colonial imposition should understand implicitly uh, the importance uh, of supporting our First Nations people and standing with them in solidarity, in empathy, and um, um, working hard, uh, as Thomas said, to legitimise our place in this country. Um, which remains a colony to us all, um, except for First Nations people who are still fighting uh, to protect their own country. Um, I, I'm not going to sing Solid Rock tonight. Um, we know that song and uh, I nailed my colours to the mast 40, over 40 years ago with that song. Um, it hasn't changed. My love and respect has only deepened in this country for First Peoples. And uh, what I've been shown and been given is uh, an embarrassment of riches, the treasures, um, the ever deepening understanding of those treasures and that connection to country. 
Um, this is a love song, a prayer, I guess, called um, Heart of My Country. And it's a song of reflection, really, um, and encouragement for um, First Nations people here in this country and for all of us um, who are allies and um, Saturday will come and Saturday will go. And um, if the answer is no, the hard work begins the next day. If the answer is yes, the hard work begins the next day. Um, be of good heart, as Bob Brown would say. And um, we'll keep struggling for decency and uh, a country, an honourable country that we love to live in. Thoughts blow down empty roads Carried on the wind Travel around the country, then return again. From a place of standing still, I feel them touch my soul. Does anybody make decisions of conscience anymore? Out of my country Never surrender Gotta keep you dreaming Got to keep believing Working it out Go through where the places keeps me wondering why. But time comes and goes, and spirit never dies. Look into the heart of the land, then we have to choose whether the wealth we gain. Worth the wealth out of my country. Never surrender. Gotta keep you dreaming. Working it out
have to keep believing Working it out Thank you so Thank much, you so much, Shane. Uh, thanks so much. If there's any encouragement to draw, Rory, even if the numbers go down on Saturday, which they mustn't, but if they do, there's still nearly half the country with the First Nations people here. Absolutely. Thank you, Shane. Thank you, Shane. That was just spine-tinglingly fantastic. Um, I, I just um, I mentioned earlier about organizing something um, I, I want to rent the auditorium tomorrow and get Thomas and Shane and everyone that has spoken. Auntie Kathy, are you up for a party? Will we have one in your birthday party on Monday? Hopefully. We'll... Absolutely. We'll Excellent. be there with bells on. Excellent. We need to get us get all of us crew into a room and uh, and make some good good memories together. So um this, as I mentioned to folks earlier, um, I'm relatively new in this country. I have uh, came here nine months ago or 10 months ago. Um, I was here as a backpacker 20 odd years ago and spent time up the tent embassy. And I lived in WA for a year when I was a child as well. So I have a, a sort of a hodgepodge connection with the country, but I'm very much relearning as an older guy now and reconnecting and understanding and what a time to be here and what a time to be alive. Um, and I always look to those that are out there for, I suppose, leadership and knowledge and inspiration, those that are out there in the trenches. And one of those that has really caught my attention in recent months is uh, Rachel Perkins, who's just such a phenomenal campaigner. Uh, I don't know how she might feel about the word tireless because I'm sure it is tiring, but it's uh, the dedication and the insight and the analysis and the commitment has just been so inspiring and also educational as well. Uh, I know you're uh, in Alice Springs at the moment, Rachel. Rachel is a co-director of the Yes campaign, also a well-known filmmaker and documentary maker. So I'll, you're very welcome, Rachel. Hi. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Um... Should I just start talking now? <laughs> uh, whatever you wish. <laughs> um, you're, you're join just maybe tell us where you're joining us from and, and how are you feeling with, you know, after the last few months and the, with a few days to go, or is that too big of a question right now? Yeah, no, well, um, yeah, well I'm at my home in Alice. Uh, my sister is in the other room and uh, in Aranda country. Um, this is my, where my great-grandmother was from. And interestingly... I have Irish heritage as well, um, as well as Aranda heritage, because my, my grandmother survived a massacre here at a place called Blackfellas Bones. Hundreds of people were killed, we think by a policeman and a party of whoever, we don't know exactly. Um, but anyway, she survived and um, she took shelter with an Irishman, an Irish miner. Mm. and had three children to him, um, one of which was my grandmother. And, uh, yeah, so, so I always credit my Irish heritage <laughs> um, and it's so nice to be amongst company and feel the sol solidarity of the Irish community here in Australia. Um, many of us Indigenous people have Irish heritage as well because, you know, well, you know the story about the Irish, I don't need to tell you, and... Um, Blackfellas also have part of that story as well. So um, I wanted to, yeah, thank you very much, the people behind this, Loretta and others who pulled this together, um, and also pay respect to Cathy and the ladies there on the couch. Um, I haven't been sitting here for all of this, but, um, yeah, it's... Um, so, so to your question, um, yeah, it's... Uh, 
we're we're two days away from something that's been two hundred years overdue. <laughs> mm. um, you know the numbers are not looking good in our favour, um, so that's heartbreaking. Uh, and we've been inspired by, you know, the marriage equality campaign, the tireless work that Alex did, his leadership. Um, you know, that's our great inspiration, what was achieved for the country with that campaign. Um, but we were in a very difficult situation, I think, with the sort of um, conspiracy theories and uh, mm -hmm. misinformation abounding. We had, we've, we've always been very challenged. And um, we've also been stuck within, which is what, always what Aboriginal people get stuck in, the, the, you know, this thing between the parties, you know, using a political football. It's the story of our mm -hmm. people experience in this country but the thing that has been most amazing i think is like being on this on this session tonight and listening to people and going out and meeting volunteers and you know being in forums around the country there's just been an overwhelming outpouring of just beautiful support um from our fellow australians for this and and you write the comments in the in the chat about um and shane's comment about you know, we may not get there, but we will get, you know, there will be millions and millions of Australians who will vote for this. And that's an outstanding thing. Um, unfortunately, I think, you know, our country suffers from a lack of knowledge about its history. And um, certainly you can see that, that the young people, when you look at the, when you look at the research, young people are overwhelmingly in support of this and the older they get, unfortunately, the less supportive they are. And we know that, that that earlier generation didn't grow up with any sort of education about the history of their country. So I think they, they have a lack of understanding about what the rationale for this is. Um, but they've also been um, very much misled, deliberately misled yeah. from misinformation. Yeah. Um, people think have all sorts of wild ideas about what this referendum's about. I think it's going to take away their houses. And, yeah. I think it's going to be a veto over parliament. I think it's going to be a tax on all Australians. I think we're all communists. I mean, it's just out of control. Um, so, yeah, look, I feel sympathy for people who, who haven't been able to overcome that misinformation and, and have been reduced to being fearful yeah. of something that is so incredibly modest. Um, so... We have two days to go, though, and a lot can happen in two days. Um, we've seen the polling improving. Um, and, you know, I still hold out hope, although, you know, it's very tough. You know, we're definitely the underdog. Um, so I think the thing that we're asking people is, and I think, you know, um, Alex said it, you know, if, if we all turned like three or four people around to yes, um, we would we would win the referendum, you know, with the, those supportive Australians that we have with us. So there's a bit of work to do before the referendum, you know, before Saturday night. Um, I'll be voting tomorrow and I'll have to have a bloody Sky News cameraman following me around. <laughs> it's just horrible. But, you know, that's what we do, isn't it? And uh, we will be uh, completely committed to this until the end. And... Um, what will stay with me in all of this is the extraordinary, extraordinary solidarity that's been shown. So um, uh, I want to thank the organisers of this for that support and, and, and ask you to, to, you know, use the, use the, use the 48 hours we've got to um, talk to people. And even if, it doesn't get across the line. Those people who might be close to you will feel better for having understood it and, and voted yes, because people will always remember how they voted on this. Yeah. It's yeah. like marriage equality. It's, it's a, it's a question of human rights and dignity. And um, I think people will look back and, you know, once the dust clears as it has on other questions like this nationally significant questions, at least those people that you might have converted will feel better about themselves in the long run. Yeah. Um, I think the final thing I'd like to say is that um, because people don't know our communities and they don't necessarily understand them, they don't understand that there's huge support for this. 
you know, they look at one random person on Facebook saying no and they think that represents us all. Um, we've got every major Aboriginal land council on the mainland supporting this. So here in the Territory, four, four land councils representing more than 75,000 Aboriginal people. Um, and New South Wales Aboriginal Land Council got 24,000 members. You know, Kimberley Land Council, Cape York Land Council, these are democratically elected grassroots democratic organisations which may or may not have their faults, whatever, but they are the voice of Indigenous people on matters of land and um, they are representative of us and they're overwhelming support. So please be sure that um, although there are people on the left and right of politics, Indigenous people, um, who don't support this. And, of course, there's always going to be, you know, a range of views. When you vote for this, you know, you're standing with our people mm -hmm. and there's just no question of that in the vast majority. So um, be, be, be comforted by that and secure in that, um, in your position um, and in accepting the invitation of the Uluru Statement to walk with us. Thank you, Rachel. Well, we absolutely are walking with you and we'll, we'll bring it home um, however long it takes. So thank you, Rachel, and best of luck for the coming days. I, 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 don't, I, don't, uh, I don't envy you with this Sky News cameraman, but, um, you know, hopefully it, it turns out to be a good day for you as well. <laughs> take, take care. Thanks again. Okay, folks, so we still have... Um, quite a, a way to go um, as expect this this was all come together in the last few days there's a bunch of us just working as volunteers uh, many people have their day jobs and all the rest so uh, we didn't expect to have the level of interest from speakers and attendees and everything so it's it's a, become a beautiful mashup but uh, part of that means that we're kind of running behind schedule and that kind of thing so hopefully you can stay with us if you need to you know, take a toilet break. I don't need to know about it or uh, go for a drink or whatever it is. Um, but we should be here for, I guess, another hour. Um, I, I'm not lying when I say there's, there's still an amazing lineup to come off music and speakers. And it's going to be worth it. It's going to warm and lift your hearts as uh, uh, to feed you into the coming days as well. So I think we're going to Tasmania next. Um, I'm working my mouse across my screen as I try and look like I know what I'm doing as I do it, um, such as the nature of live streams. And so this is Martin Flanagan, uh, who's a well-known author. Uh, he's also a playwright and journalist, and he's written extensively on cultural connections, and he's going to speak uh, now for a few moments. Martin, you're very welcome. You're actually muted there, so we'll get you to unmute. And I think he's been on a bit of a, you've been out in the bush for a while. That's the word on the street. So is that true? Yeah, I have. Um, but thank you so much for inviting me. Um, I want to pay, you know, it's an honour to be here. And I want to pay my respects to the elders of both cultures, Irish and Aboriginal. Um, I wandered the world for a few years in the, in the 1970s. And when I came back to Australia, I, um, I wanted to connect with the Indigenous people of this land. And for the next 35 years, I took every opportunity that came my way to do that, um, both in the bush and in the city. And I, there were two big surprises. The first big surprise was how little racism I copped as a white fella from Aboriginal people. And the second surprise I had was that I met a series of great elders and none of them expected me to feel guilt. And I'm currently writing a book with a great Tasmanian Aboriginal elder called Patsy Cameron. And she says, when the past is acknowledged, the guilt stays in the past. So I wrote about these experiences as I had them. And then in the 1990s during the Howard era, uh, I was one of a number of people, a great, you know, a large number of people, who because they had a desire for a closer, realistic relationship with Aboriginal Australia, got accused of promoting the black armband 
view of Australian history. And the idea was that we were doing it out of guilt. And after I had enough experiences with great elders, I didn't have that guilt. And one day it occurred to me that the sort of people who were accusing me of only being motivated by guilt, like John Howard, Alexander Downer, Andrew Bolt, that they were people who had no meaningful relationships with Aboriginal or Indigenous people. And that's when I began to realise that this country's in a sort of a, a frozen state of fear and this is paralysing and allows for the spread of disinformation and lies. And that's what we've had a torrent of during this referendum election. Roger Stone, one of Trump's allies, he said in his rules of political combat, attack your enemy from every direction, leave him feeling confused and besieged. And that's what the no camp have done. This has been the most extraordinary campaign. If I have a criticism of the yes campaign, I don't think it went big enough or hard enough. The yes vote are people with a vision. We have a vision for this country. The no vote has no vision. There are no people out in public wearing no badges. There are no, no public meetings. They rely on the murky, fetid atmosphere of social media. So that what we have is a campaign and a referendum campaign that will be as shameful to our nation as something like Brexit is to, America, is to Britain now. All I want to say in conclusion is to echo what a number of other people have said. The yes vote, we were the people who had the vision. We were the people who had the momentum. There are millions of us. And regardless of the result on Saturday, we should stick together, remember one another, take strength from one another, because I think this is only the first of many great challenges which is awaiting us. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Martin. That was very powerful and a great insight into the some of the strategic forces at play. Um, it has been mentioned already, the word conspiracy, and we don't want to get too much into it, but I would encourage everyone to Google the words um, Advance Australia, Fair Australia, funding, where it's coming from. And I think uh, when this is all over, there's going to be a great sort of evaluation done as to where this money came from and where these tactics came from. And some of it's already starting to come on, to, on record already. And it's, it's pretty dark business. And I suppose speaking personally, I would share the view that Martin, it, just because we're nice people and loving people doesn't mean that we shouldn't you know fight hard and fight strong and sometimes get stuck in and if that's what we need to do that's what we need to do in the diversity of range of types of campaigns that are needed um, and there's going to be battles ahead on a range of issues as well but again i have to try and avoid digressing into there's so many topics we could get into um so where are we i'll just take a quick check in i think we might be going to our most northerly guest at least the most northern no maybe not actually um this is Maeve Colombo, who is an Irish person who has moved to this land maybe 15 years ago. Um, Maeve, you're joining us from the top end. Could you tell us a little bit about where you are and what you do up there and what your perspective is leading into this referendum in the coming days? Yeah, 
Yeah, absolutely. And what an honor to be here with all of you. Thank you for sharing everything. So I am living on Yonga country. It's an absolute honor to do so. I, you, most of you or some of you may know my beloved Yongu grandmother, my momo called Miss Japri Munangurich. She can't be with us tonight. She did want to be, but she is with us in spirit as she knows how important this is. And another big person who's flying to Cairns tomorrow to, um, to be there for the S yes vote over there. So look, I am up here because we came in as tourists. We were adopted in and we heal with our Indigenous family. So the referendum for me has brought up a big memory from me. So I am Dublin born, but I was raised most of my life in the sectarian torn part of Northern Ireland that we know as Ulster. And, you know, I was thinking about the referendum and I was like, all this no, all this chat. And I was like, it just brought me straight back to a memory when I was driving in the car, my mom was driving and we're on our way to my grandmother's house. And uh, emergency broadcast came over the radio and it was one that said that the recent ceasefire was over. I sobbed. I sobbed because I didn't know a way out. I sobbed because I was a child stuck in tor torment bloodshed, war, and I was only 12 years old. Now, as a visitor to these lands, it made me think of what actually stopped the torment of where I called home at that stage. And that was an agreement called the Good Friday Agreement. It was one where two sides of the community had to work together. There was no other way it was going to happen. Was it the best case scenario? No. But from the signing of that agreement, it ended 30 years of violence and bloodshed and loss of life. So fast forward now, living in Australia, living on Yungle country, walking with beautiful First Nations from all over this country and this continent. The document that sits behind this referendum is the Uluru Statement from the Heart by one of the largest consensus of First Nations, knowledge keepers, elders from this very country. They are the heart of this country. This is their invitation for us to stand with them. This is their invitation to ask us to be in our heart, to unite, to reconcile a part of us, because our heart only ever wants us to feel love first, not pain. It wants us to embrace each other, not hate each other. But I understand just how much turmoil, turmoil pain, and everything that is in the way of us feeling our heart. It is an invitation. It is an invitation to help get this yes across the line. I am one of those very hopeful people. It's not over until it's over. We still have two days. We still have two days and a lot can happen. Absolutely. You, absolutely, it can, Maeve, you're, you're so true. Like the, the polls have been heading in our direction at a rapid uh, pace in the coming days. Yeah. and. I do believe that, you know, every now and then in an individual's life and indeed in a country's life, miraculous moments occur, uh, moments that we get to have the privilege to be in and to be part of and to make happen. And let's, let's ensure that this is one of those. So thanks again. And uh, hopefully we'll meet in person at some point along the way. Take care. Okay, folks, so we might be going live to Ireland now, I think. We did have a few tech gremlins uh, with the music here for Steel, but we might be okay. So um, Steel Wall is a friend of mine who actually lived up the road from me about 10 months ago before we ended up in this country. Uh, he's a great, originally from Dublin, singer, songwriter, musician. He's got his second album out now and uh, he's making waves and he's very much a guy who speaks his mind, sings his truth 
and challenges and confronts injustice for every season. You you really find that in his lyrics and in his music, which I encourage you to check out and also celebrate. Uh, I'll just give bring him on screen now. I want to celebrate your new album, Theo. So congrats, because I know that takes a lot of energy and a lot of dedication. So well done. Uh, you might want to explain the T-shirt because uh, Irish people will know what it means and is. Uh, not everyone may do. So, uh, Steo, you're very welcome. Maybe give us a wee intro to your T-shirt. Uh, yeah, so the, the T-shirt is um, owns racism on its head that we used to experience, Irish people used to experience in uh, England in the 70s and 80s, um, you know. And so they used to have signs on, on pubs and shops saying no blacks, no dogs, no Irish. No gypsies allowed in this establishment. And these t-shirts on the back of it, it says know our story and know your history. Um, so it, it flips it flips that on its head and it's also the name of an anti-racism song that I wrote uh, on this album as well, saying it's uh, it called More Blacks, More Dogs, More Irish. Exactly. Which I got a lot of flack for as well. <laughs> you did get a lot of yeah. flack for, it, but you also got a lot of support for it. And uh, you know, yeah. th there there is. Uh, I think it's been referenced a few times tonight that sometimes when we do make a stand, that we get we get abuse, we get attacked, and and many people here have been. I uh, felt the brunt of that, and you you did in recent times as well. Yeah. So celebrate that courage and resilience. That it comes at a price often as well, doesn't it? Yeah, well, I think, you know, you're on the right track when you're pissing people like that off, like, you know, that's, that's, that's how I you're see pissing, it. Anyway, pissing you know? off the right people, yeah. So, yeah, Steo, yeah. Um, you're going <laughs> to sing us a song, and uh, it's, I, it's I, I change it. Maybe you're not. Okay, tell us. I, yeah, I, no, I, I've had a problem, uh, technical problems with the guitar, but right, just man. from everything I've heard here this morning, Rory, I just, like, I, I'm, a, I'm a member of the travelling community, yeah, the Indigenous Tribes of Ireland. And so I just I just wanted to express like me my solidarity and my love to the to the First Nation peoples of, of Australia and I've a real urge to sing this song. I've no guitar, but I'm gonna try a cappella if, if that's all right. It's a song oh, off the album that that it's, it's just my ancestors want to talk to your ancestors. So I'll give it a bash, all right. <laughs> <laughs> When the great and wise old chieftain lay down and closed his eyes, and we gathered around in a circle. The rain had poured from the skies, the rain it fell down, fell down, the rain fell down upon our brow, the rain it fell down, fell down, the rain fell down and cleansed our brow. When we damage and pillage the mother, we only reap what we sow. We must learn to love one another. Brothers and sisters, it's all that I know. Love is free. It's free. Love is free for you and me. The ancestors call out to me. They call out to me. When the great and wise old spirits lay down and dreamt up this land, and they whispered this song to the boards in the trees, and the boards they sang it for man, then we were free, we were free. Then we were free to be what will be. The ancestors call out to me. They call out to me. The ancestors call out to me. They call out to me. The ancestors. The ancestors. The ancestors. The ancestors. 
ancestors and be shattered with my prayers. Please, the ancestors. I just wanted to express that to the people. Thank you for allowing me to try. I'm sorry, my, uh, my technology gave up on me. No, I think it was a blessing, Steo. I think that one, the ancestors were in charge of that one. Yeah, yeah, they felt the need to come in there, you know. Because yes. uh, it's the same, same struggles, you know, wherever you go. So uh, thanks, Rory, and the best of luck on Saturday. I hope it's a resounding yes for everybody, yeah. Thanks, Theo. Have a look at the comments before you go, because you're getting a lot of love in there. Um, st- spine tingling is what somebody yeah, said. Yeah, well, I, I actually started it in the wrong key, but it's all right. It's Listen. Almost meant to come out, come out. <laughs> I'm going to boot you off in a minute, because uh, I was talking to Sean about this earlier, that us Irish people say sorry a lot, don't we? And we're like, it's like, don't apologize. You aced it. Thanks so much. Good on you. Thanks, man. See ya. Take care. Good to see you, Theo. Sorry, I've got myself uh, in a technical um, bit of bother there for a second. I have to stay focused now. We're on the final final road. I guess we were the final quarter, so um, we'll get there and it, we're shaping up well. And so many people still with us from all over, really. And I really appreciate seeing all these comments in and so much excitement and love, which I know like that hasn't been the dominant sense of the energy in the last few weeks is is you know, we dare not have used the word excitement, um, but sometimes we're allowed to taste hope and taste what victory might feel like and to birth it into reality. And this very much could be one of these moments. And if it's not, let's make it one of these moments in whatever number of ways we have to do it. As, as we have said earlier, the fight goes on and it's long and we've got the community, we've got the people, we've got the minds, the hearts, the talents, and the experienced and particularly the elders that we have with us and indeed the ancestors. So we're going down to Narm now, back down to Narm uh, to um, Ruben Berg, if he is here, I think he is. Uh, Ruben, lovely to, to bring you on stage here. So Ruben, uh, you got your t-shirt on, fair play, nice one. Um, and you're the co-chair of the People's Assembly down there. Uh, which many people are now talking about as very much an example of what we don't have to fear. I mean, like at the end of the day, we're talking about advisory bodies and informed decision making. It's not even radical change at one level. You know, it's, it's substantial, it's significant, it's meaningful, but it's just very practical common sense. And you're living that experience now in your work with the, the Assembly, aren't you? Yeah, a- absolutely. We, we've had an elected democratic, accountable group of First Peoples providing advice to government for the last four years here in Victoria. So it really is nothing to fear whatsoever. Uh, and it's been amazing to hear some of the other speakers uh, sharing their thoughts so far. I just had three thoughts I wanted to share and I'll try and be short and sweet because that's the way I like it. Um, and in this whole debate around this referendum, one of the things I found really interesting is so much focus on the views of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples about this referendum. And we know that the vast majority of Aboriginal people do support the voice, but there are some people out there who don't from our community. But I think there's a strange irony that there's even consideration of what it is that we think about this, because here we have this really significant decision that people recognise will have a big impact on Aboriginal peoples. And so lots of people want to try and find out what we think about it and are struggling because they're hearing different views and they're not sure whose voice to listen to. So wouldn't it be really useful if there was a formal way that we could find out what First Peoples think about something? If there was a democratically elected group of people who could represent what Aboriginal people think about it. That's the whole point of the voice. So that when there are these big decisions being made about us, we can find out what Aboriginal people and Torres Strait Islander people think about it. So it does seem very strange to me that the very nature of the debate shows that we need a voice and the the power of having a voice. Uh, The other thing that I find interesting about this conversation is that I've been working in this space of um, Aboriginal Affairs for a very long time and talking to people for a long time about the closing the gap and how important it is to work towards closing the gap and how we need to address these significant discrepancies. 
And when I talk often to people about closing the gap and point out how significant the discrepancies are, lots of times, understandably, people say to me, well, what can I do about this? Like, I want to make a difference on this. What can I do? And the reality is most of the time in the past when I've had that conversation with people, I haven't got much of an answer for them because there's not a lot that people can do on their own. This is systemic change we're talking about that needs to happen. But we're quite lucky that right now there is a chance for people, for individuals to make a difference in closing the gap. If people want to close the gap, they can vote yes. That will make a difference to closing the gap. So right now there's a chance for individuals to help to close the gap by voting yes, by encouraging their friends and their family to vote yes, to going out and spending the next 48 hours to advocate and encourage people, go to the polling booths and hand out information, be there to tell people what this referendum is really about, and every one of us can help to close the gap. The last comment I want to finish on, and we've had some, you know, there's some positives and negatives about where the polling is going. I always choose to stay optimistic about these things. And in the last couple of days, I've taken inspiration from my young kids uh, who are big lovers of musical theatre. Uh, and we've been focusing a lot on Mary Poppins and one of the wonderful songs from Mary Poppins, which is anything can happen. And in particular, one of my favourite lines from that, which is most relevant to what we're talking about tonight, and that's this. Jelly isn't jelly till you set it. There's lots of speculation about what the jelly is going to be like when it's set, but it has not set yet. There is still this another day and a few more hours left to work out what this jelly is going to be like, and we can all go out there and make a difference. So I'll leave it on that. Excellent. I never expected Mary Poppins was going to enter the conversation. <laughs> it's beautiful. Thank you. you. You can sing us out on that one if you feel like a ribbon, but uh, <laughs> no, it's, it's, a beautiful, uh, it's a beautiful metaphor, a great way of looking at it. Thanks so much. Thank you, Ruben. Best of luck with all your good work. Take care. Um, okay. So um, just want to make, I just had a note in front of me to remind people just one of them, before I get myself in any bother of misinformation myself, just in relation to the funding streams I was talking about, the, one of the groups I'd encourage you to look up is called Atlas Networks, Atlas Networks. And again, my prediction is this is going to be one of the big stories of what has happened in recent weeks. Uh, I do feel that there's a greater threat to Australian democracy, but I don't think that's a uniquely Australian problem. I think that's in Ireland right now when I see what's going on with refugee and migrant rights and how narratives are shifting. It happened with Brexit and as been said already, it happened around Trump. So there's multiple fronts to fight in. But back to the, the positive note is that community spirit of anything can happen and we can achieve anything. And we've brought this together. Look at the energy that we're creating tonight. It just came about. I actually haven't met. I actually don't know most of the people I'm working with around Irish for the Voice. I've never physically met them. Uh, you know, it's just many, many WhatsApp messages and texts. So I just want to give a big shout out to Joe and Enda and Shauna and Loretta um, all people I've been working very closely with and it's been a privilege to be part of that. You know what it's like when you're part of a community or a collective and just amazing things are happening and it brings out the best in people and it's given me a sense of uh, the hope that is possible and I look forward. It's also helped me land in this country as well. I think, you know, I've said in recent times that activism in many ways it's seen as a noble act but it's also kind of a selfish act because it kind of feels good and you meet wonderful people who often tend to be the best people and so i'm celebrating all the volunteers and activists doing all the amazing work out there so next up um we have we're going back to parliament i think and let me see what i've got behind me yeah we are we're going where this is like we're exposing the irish australian uh, power network here we're like the you know in the you said the Teamsters used to run the US, but um, we're going to uh, bring forward uh, another Irish Australian, Marjorie O'Neill, who is an MP in New South Wales in Coogee, I think. Yeah. Hi, Marjorie. Good to see you. Very Hi. welcome. Thank you for having me on. It's lovely to be here. And thank you to the organisers for organising this rally. Sorry, I've just gotten home from work as well. No, so. no problem. That's absolutely take, take your time. If you need <laughs> another moment, that's all right as well. Uh, <laughs> No, so Marjorie, I just want to ask to share a few thoughts about, you know, what are you feeling at the moment and what, what are you thinking, what are you hoping for the coming days and beyond? Well, I, 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 um, look, I've been on polling booths now for quite a while and I'm, I'm full of hope, right? I think the polling um, 
is against us, but I do think that at our core, we're good people. Um, people have identified um, here in County Coogee. We've got the highest proportion of people who are Irish born and of Irish descent. And even families like mine, like I'm now fifth generation Australian, but my family left Ireland because of persecution and dispossession. Um, and this is a story very similar the same as our First Nations Australians. And I hope that the Irish community here in the eastern suburbs uh, turn out and support our First Nations and they vote yes because what we're, what First Nations people are asking for is incredibly moderate. Um, they're reaching their hand out in the spirit of reconciliation and asking for something that is incredibly simple, which also we should be really, really proud of. Um, you know, I've spent my life travelling the world and always when I go to places uh, like Europe, like Southeast Asia, they'll often have a comment about Australia saying, oh, but you're a young country, what would you know? And the reality is we're not a young country, we are old. Um, First Nations people have thrived for 65,000 years. They had trade patterns throughout Southeast Asia. Um, they have environmental conservation and these are things that we should be listening to and we should be proud about and we should have this embedded into our constitution um, my view is we leave nothing in the tank we turn out um, the if the polling is correct it is traveling our way um, but I, I'm hopeful that's my view I'm very hopeful I think that when it turns to the day I think there's a number of people who are probably not engaged and when they turn up to read the question, um, they're going to just say, is that all? Um, and I think that's it because it is such a moderate and simple ask that First Nations people are asking us to do um, and I think it's incredibly generous of them to be asking for something so moderate. Um, you know, this is really a moral question for Australians. It is about our human rights. It is about the dignity that we want to give First Nations people. Um, and I think that for anyone who thinks that this is over, it isn't. There's still two days left. And please turn out. There are still people who are deeply undecided. And if you know those people, call them, get on a phone, convince them. I have three people today that I had long conversations with who are undecided. Um, this battle is not over and I, from the bottom of my heart, I think that we can change this. Well said, well said, Marjorie. Um, as you said, like those conversations are still happening in real time, like this is not yes. over. There's many, many hours to go and it takes five minutes to have a conversation with friends, family, texts, phone, WhatsApp, Facebook, whatever it is. So thanks so much for that encouragement and best of luck with your campaigning and polling in the next coming days. Thanks again. Thank um, so um, let me get myself back on screen here. Um, so we're going to go back down the country again uh, towards Narm and a little bit uh, more southerly. Um, we have one of Australia's foremost um, social justice advocates and activists, um, humanitarian, well known for his work with World Vision and also in particular gambling reform. And he's been working with Noel Pearson and others in Tasmania and busy around the country uh, campaigning and speaking on The Voice. So we're going to go to Tim Costello now. And I have to, yep, there you are, Tim, uh, add spotlight. You're very welcome, Tim. Uh, good to see you. Great to see you. And congratulations, Rory, on bringing this Irish for The Voice together. Uh, when you've been in the country such a short time and have pulled this off, I just want to say uh, well done. Um, so my uh, great-grandfather, Patrick Costello, arrived in Melbourne, a good Irishman, in 1841. Right at that time, the hard men from Tasmania, known as Van Diemen's Land, were doing the biggest land grab in Melbourne and Victoria in the British Commonwealth. Uh, and the extraordinary dispossession uh, was just going on 
under his eyes, an Irishman who ran pubs here in Melbourne. Uh, it's fascinating to me that uh, the governor of uh, Van Diemen's Land, now Tasmania, was uh, Governor George Arthur. He oversaw that black war, that genocide in Tasmania, but he then repented. And he wrote to uh, the colonial secretary, Lord Glenelg, who was a Wilberforce humanitarian, and he said, please do not make the same mistakes that we made here in Tasmania. That's why Lord Glenelg wrote into the letters patent in South Australia, which Torrens was setting up. Indigenous are there. You must have a treaty. You must purchase their land. You must have their consent. What Torrens did was circumvent all those letters patent. Why should we in South Australia have our hands tied and not do what Victoria's done, Tasmania's done, New South Wales has done? And the land was just taken. But uh, Governor George Arthur Repenting also said, and look at New Zealand. And in New Zealand, those Wilberforce evangelicals who had the balance of power in Westminster were more successful. Why was the Treaty of Waitangi in 1840 struck? Because of people like George Arthur repenting. Fast forward to the 1890s. New Zealand was in the original discussions to come into the new Commonwealth of Australasia and the new constitution we we're writing. The only delegate in the 1890s that raised the question of the fate of the Indigenous was the New Zealand delegate. What will happen, he said, to the Indigenous in this new nation? The answer he got was, you don't have to worry about them. They're all dying out and they were left out of our constitution. The New Zealand delegate raised it because they had a treaty in 1840, as most other Western nations have. You know, in my mind, I play out this little plot. Our first Prime Minister, Edmund Barton, insisted on the race clause in our constitution, which is still there. He insisted on it to say, we must control inferior and coloured peoples. Imagine if Indigenous had gone to Edmund Barton, who was openly racist, but all sides of politics was. Hierarchy of being an Indigenous of the lowest rung of civilization, barely human, left out for that reason of our constitution. Imagine if Indigenous had said to uh, uh, Edmund Barton, okay, you're writing a constitution, we've been smashed. We've lost our lands, we're losing our people, they're dying, we're losing our language, we've lost everything. We just want to ask if in this new constitution you'd consider a couple of things. If Edmund Barton had said, okay, what is it that you want? And our Indigenous back in 1900 had said, all that we want is that you recognise us as the First Nations in your constitution and you just give us a voice to advise on the laws you're going to make that affect us. Non-binding, only advice, just the right to advise. I believe the racist Edmund Barton would have said, is that all you want? Is that all you want? That's what this constitutional debate is about with saying Indigenous have made such a generous, such an extraordinary offer, I think Edmund Barton would have accepted it. What I love about the Irish is the number of speeches, the number of songs, the great coming together. I have uh, love what you've done tonight, Rory. We have to keep hope alive. And the Irish voice, the Irish voice, from my great-grandfather in 1841 on is so important here to keep hope alive. Thank you. Wonderful. Thanks so much, Tim. Thanks. Thank you. And uh, well done on all the campaigning you've been doing on this and many, many other issues. So thanks again. Um, so we're almost there, folks. Um, we only have uh, one more speaker. 
And then we're going to, please do stay for the final song because it's going to be a very special one. Um, but we're going back up to the top end now, I think. So we have Mil Ilma. Are you there, Mil Ilma May? You're very welcome. Yes. Hello. How are you? you? How are you? Yes, I'm well. I'm not actually in the top end, but oh, you're not. Okay. No, I'm near you actually on Gumbangia Country. Oh, cool. We'll have yeah, to meet, we'll have to meet up. Yes, definitely. Excellent. So I, I, I came across you online during the campaign. Your um, I, the algorithm brought me your way. Sometimes the algorithm does good things as well as all the bad things it does. Um, but you've been very vocal and prominent, and I know you've had your own soul searching to do uh, in this campaign as well, which I'm, I imagine is quite difficult and perhaps painful as well. Um, can you talk to me a little bit about where you're at now and, and what, what this is all meant for you? Yeah, definitely. Um, it's been quite a journey to um, get to this place, and um, it as we've mentioned and a lot of the speakers before have mentioned a lot of my fears around the voice um came from the misinformation and disinformation that was shared so virally on social media um and so i think the role that the media has played in this referendum is something that we have to look critically at going forward um and i think there's a lot to do with as we said the trump era stuff and the anti-vax stuff and all of that is all connected. Um, and so it made talking about or learning about the voice um, quite a scary and daunting thing. And um, we've seen that the No campaign has preyed on our fears, um, regardless of whether you're Indigenous or not. Um, the No campaign only targets fear, and they've done a really brilliant job at that. Um, it's been very hard um, back home, and that's actually why I'm here. Um, not on my country because I needed to take a break from how violent and horrible it was getting back home um, in terms of just witnessing the violence of the no campaign and um, the outward, um, like, yeah, just the outward racism of that campaign. So it's very visceral, it's very real. And, yeah, I had to physically remove myself from that environment for my own safety. Yeah, I think that's something that uh, many of us need to keep in mind that there's a high uh, emotional toll and cultural toll on people right now and that we need to be very respectful and mindful and cautious and sensitive. And there's going to be a lot of repair and healing work needed in addition to the work that was already needed. Um, so I'm glad to hear that you sort of, I don't know if you might call that a self-care gesture to to go somewhere where you can be but uh i think like we have to find these forums and places and safe spaces um to to mind each other because activism does often come at a toll on particularly mental health and relationships and finances for that matter so um i hope the common days and weeks go well for you. Could you just talk to me a little bit about the organization that you run as well? Just give it a plug. And yeah. <laughs> if there's any very, very wealthy people watching in, which there very well may be, then uh, we might get you some cash sent that way to the work that you're doing. Yeah, well, um, thank you. <laughs> that, we would love that. Um, yeah, yeah so I run Uprising of the People, which is an organization I started back home on um, Gulenbringen country in Darwin. Um, in the Northern Territory, for those who don't know. Um, and we, first of all, started with um, protesting and in the activism space to stop youth incarceration. Um, we, our detention centres are filled with black kids and the way, and the police state that we live in, in the Northern Territory is horrific and violent. So we started this organisation to stand up for young people and to begin to have um, to influence policy and change um, around laws affecting young people, young black people. And our organisation has now shifted more to bringing elders and young people together to learn about country. And we find this to be so healing for both the elders and the young people. And it's actually been a really joyful experience moving into the preventative space of bringing our communities together and um, 
the old people love it and the young people love it and in turn we're learning how to look after country and to protect country and um some of that work involves also um, activism for country and we just recently managed to stop some housing development on a sacred place um, an area of cultural significance um, for us called Binbara Lee Point and so we're still hoping to have that area fully protected next year in March and I think a lot of the work that we're doing will only be amplified and supported by a yes vote um, a lot of my elders are scared for um, a no vote to have negative repercussions on things like saving Lee Point or for things like preventing young people from being incarcerated. So we see the yes as um, just a little step in helping the work that we're already doing and giving us a better footing in that. Um, yeah, so that's the Uprising of the People. Please check us out. <laughs> yeah, no problem. I used to run a youth organisation and I, I know like it's sometimes you it's hard to kind of make the ask, but I'm making it for you. Let's send the money down to Uprising of the People. Uh, it's uprisingofthepeople.org. I know it's not all about money, but it does it does help, doesn't it? So um, keep up the great work and thanks so much for making the time to join us during this week. And um, Thank you so much for having me. And also our, my last name, May, is actually Irish. And so I'm Irish as well. So it feels good to be with my countrymen. Um, and yeah, it's been really beautiful to hear everyone speaking. So thank you for having me. Ah, wonderful. Thanks so much. Thank you. Um, okay, so um, we're pretty much at the end. Uh, I do want to take care of just a tiny bit of housekeeping before we go to our final special moment. Um, firstly, um, sorry, my brain is about to explode here. I'm trying to... <laughs> juggling multiple things at once and i've just about managed it to the end and now my brain is starting to collapse so uh somebody is commenting there about atlas network yeah i call them atlas networks plural but it's atlas network um oh yeah the um we have a wonderful group of independent senators in ireland called the civic engage uh, the civil engagement group um many of you will know some of them uh one of them's a sister of uh, mary black the singer who was mentioned earlier and is also a singer uh senator francis black who's a phenomenal activist and campaigner runs a mental health addiction charity called the rise foundation and she's an amazing advocate on palestine in particular so senator francis black and we have senator lynn ruan and senator eileen flynn who's ireland's first senator from a traveling background and Lynn is very much a senator from a working class background who really represents a voice that is too often missing in Irish politics. So, <clears throat> excuse me one second. Another member of that is Michael D's daughter. Actually, I shouldn't introduce her as that because she's very much a leader in her own right. Alice Mary Higgins is a phenomenal campaigner. Uh, she's the best policy mind I've ever met, and she just happens to be the president's daughter but the civil engagement group have sent us a note i just very short i just want to read it out because it is it does um it is political support directly from the irish parliament coming over here and it's they say the voice represents an important first step in creating a legal mechanism for the views of indigenous communities to be heard and we hope that negotiation of a national treaty will follow shortly and welcome the moves for state treaty negotiation we particularly call on members of the irish diaspora in australia to vote yes and to speak to their families and communities about the importance of this referendum and the importance of voting yes. This referendum will not address all the issues of a violent legacy of colonialism, marginalization and dispossession, but should be seen as an important first step in a larger body of work to seek justice for indigenous communities. And that's signed off from the civil engagement group. So we did get lots of um, other notes of support, Senator David Norris is another senator who was in touch, and we've had politicians from around Australia offer support as well. So there is a phenomenal amount of support out there uh, for this referendum all over the world. Um, I didn't plan this and they won't be aware of it, but I'm going to ask our wonderful aunties uh, if they might come back to us. Uh, they've been sitting there on the couch and uh, watching and observing and 
uh, I'm just wondering if we could uh, say hello to you again and maybe ask you if you have any closing reflections before we go to our closing song. You're ready to go. Do you want to talk? Or... And, and no pressure. If it's, I've put you on the spot. I've put you on the spot. I just think, listening to the, the, the words of Shane's song, you know, and for us not to surrender, uh, to, to keep going. And uh, it, it made me very emotional. Uh, and, uh, and I just really love the support and uh, the people that, you know, are there. To, we didn't know this was going to be tonight, you know. We just thought we were going to come and listen. And it was very overwhelming. So thank Aww. you very much, each and every one of you. Yeah. Same for me. I um, it made, it, I just think of my um, my mum and my grandmother and uh, and, all, uh, and all my relatives that I've lost and and um, you know and I think I'm in my family. I'm the one that stands up and does all the fighting and mm. walking and um, yeah, but. That's me. That's how I am, and 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 it's a yes for me. I've already voted. Um, oh, good on you. And I nearly got kicked out of the filing uh, booth because I wore my yes shirt. You know? And yeah, they told me I wasn't supposed to have it on. I said, "Well, I'm not taking it off." And um, real. Yeah, and I'm here. So they're trying to tell us what not to wear. Yeah, now, so, so they're trying to tell us what to do. And yeah, you know, just for me, the yes vote's all about. We've had enough of being told yeah. what to do. We need to we we need to get that our voice out there and and um, yeah and you know just help us look after ourselves as, and stop telling us what to do all the time and, and what to wear what to wear and, and do. yeah I, I, yeah it's a yes for me and thank you very much for everybody out there thank who you, supports. Man. Yes, but yeah. Um, Saturday is going to be a very significant yeah, day for Saturday yeah. because my older sister that looked after me um, mm. after my mum and dad died, mm. it's her birthday, um, my nephew's birthday, mm. uh, my grandson's birthday, and these people are all deceased. Mm. You know, really they, they, these young men, my, my grandson and my nephew, they didn't reach the prime of their life, you know, mm. their, their life was cut short because of the neglect and disrespect and, mm. you know, and the support that they didn't have. Our health has, has mm. been, you know, they've never looked after our mob. Yep. So it's a significant day and I'll, I'll just pray for yes and um, I'll, be, I'll be praying for them too. Um, I really want to thank you for, you know, for meeting my manager, Jim Wackett, um, and asking, you know, who um, he thinks that you need to, to reach out to. And um, it's an honour and a privilege to be here. And thank you so much. You know, you've um, given us a platform to speak um, for our people and on behalf of our people, because like I said in the beginning, our mothers and fathers didn't have a voice. And um, if we can change one thing, you know, that would be to give us what we want. Mm. So it's for, you know, our kids and our grandkids and our great-grandkids, um, you know, because we haven't been um, regarded as, as people for very, very long because we came under the Flora and the Fauna Act. And, you know, to be considered as, as a person in this country who wouldn't want to be recognised in their own country? Who wouldn't want to be um, included in the Australian Constitution? Who wouldn't want to have a treaty for us Indigenous people? We are the oldest living culture in the world. There is so much for everyone to learn about us and to get to know us and want to know more about us. Come and have a conversation. Find out who we are. And, you know, because we share this land with everyone. And I really, really want to thank each and every one of you mm. for being here for us and supporting us 
and um, I'm very hopeful after listening to everyone tonight. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. God bless you all. And I hope that now, you know, all we can do is just put our um, faith in the, the people out there mm -hmm. and to our great inspiration of the man above who will bring this home for us. So thank you very, very much to everyone. Thank you. Thanks. And thank you so much to you all. I appreciate you being here and thanks for sharing with us. And um, good luck in the coming days. And also have a, a very wonderful birthday on Monday. Um, I hope you have a special yes, birthday. <laughs> okay, take care. Thanks. Um, okay, I do, just want to make a quick note and then we're almost there. Is um, This is now being li live streamed to facebook.com forward slash Irish for the voice. So the recording will be instantly available to rewatch. I did make a mistake. I'm going to blame myself because I did make the mistake. I shared it to my own Facebook first and then I had to share it over to ours. So it, it's there somewhere anyway. Uh, but you may want to share it with friends and family afterwards or tomorrow. Um, we will try to get it up on YouTube tomorrow as well. And uh, I'll share that on the social media accounts as well and probably try to stop spamming you with so many emails, but may send that link out as well. But if anybody has any follow up queries, uh, please do email tomorrow and we'll we'll follow up with that. It's info at irishforthevoice.com. So enough of that. Huge thanks to everybody. Um, I'm not going to go through all the speakers and performers by name because I'm going to and it's like a wedding. I'll make the mistake and forget somebody. But like it's just been outstanding. It's been an absolute privilege to to um, witness, to listen, to learn, to connect, to feel the hope, to feel the feel the momentum uh, in the air. Um, regardless of any referendum, the people power is strong and the people power is real. And uh, you know there used to be that chant, "What is it? The people united can never be defeated," or something like that. But uh, I'm definitely feeling it, and I'm feeling all the songs and the music and the love in the room. So thank you all, and we're going to finish off uh, by handing back to Anya, who's been such a phenomenal support in bringing all of this together. And I'd encourage you to check out Anya Tyrrell's music and her upcoming gigs as well. Check out her website, anyatyrrell.com, I think. And also Steo and all the other speakers do follow up and look up their books, their work, their campaigns and support where you can. And that's a wrap from me and thank you all. And I just final thing is when these Zoom things end, there's often a very abrupt end and everyone's like, well, what do we do now? Do we go to the pub or do we go for a walk? And it's just like, you're still at home and you've had this lovely experience and then you're left sometimes on your own. So just be gentle with yourself, listen to some music, chill out and, um, you know, just keep those good vibes going. And uh, I'll say good night and thanks again to everyone. I really appreciate it all. Thanks for everyone for tuning in and all the amazing chats. And I'm going to give it to you, Anya. Thank you. I'm going to try, but I've gotten very emotional there. <laughs> so, oh, the aunties had me undone at the end. If I wasn't crying before that, <laughs> they got me there. Um, yeah, um, one thing before I sing, I, I know Shona worked on the repeal campaign in Ireland. We were both on the global campaign for <clears throat> to end um, some archaic laws in our referendum. Um, to repeal the Eighth Amendment in Ireland. And uh, we were told in the days leading up to it that it wasn't going to pass, you know. And Shona and loads of us over here were doing every... We, we got people on flights, we flew them back home, like we were doing everything in those final hours to get anything across the line. But still, with 24 hours to go, we were told it wasn't going to pass, and it was a resounding yes from Ireland. And I just have that same hope that people can't go into that poll in Booth on Saturday and put no down when they read those sentences before it. So that's where I am with that. <laughs> um, I'm going to sing it. This is an old Irish song, but it was uh, rewritten at the time of the peace agreement in Northern Ireland. And I love that we can use old melodies and bring new lyrics or new voice to them. And this song was passed down to my dad and then on to me. And the original lyrics had the violence that was 
required, I suppose, to get us across a line to where we needed to in Ireland at that time, but that need for that violence is, is no longer with us. And this is a very peaceful way of moving forward together, which is what Maeve spoke to and other people about our history in Ireland. And um, there's a chorus on it, the rising of the moon, um, and hopefully you can sing along. I wish Shane and I could do this thing together, because <laughs> I don't think it works. You can sing along from there, Shane, I'll see you. And Teresa, hi, Teresa. <laughs> um, yeah, but the lyrics were written over 20 years ago now, but I feel like for everywhere in the world right now, these lyrics resonate. So um, I'll stop and teach you the chorus the first time through, and then you'll know how to sing it, all right? So um, I, I know we'll all be able to feel it through the screen. You can use emojis or something there to make it feel like you're singing along. <laughs> This dark winter's night The children they're all dancing And the stars are shining bright oh, My word must now be spoken Now it's sung to an old tune Let's be friends this new year coming At the rising of the moon At the rising of the moon At the rising of the moon Let's be friends this new year coming at the rising of the moon. Alright, this is your bit. At the rising of the moon, at the rising of the moon. Let's be friends this new year coming at the rising of the moon. Alright? Sing it loud. The rising of the moon at the rising of the moon. Let's be friends this new year coming at the rising of the moon. Alright, just so you know, the third line changes every time, but if you listen to the end of the chorus, you'll get it. You're all very clever. As we gaze into the stars that shine with wonder in our eyes, will we just destroy the planet or is peace to be the prize? For the way the fighting nations It dims the beauty of the tune Let's all dance the dance of freedom At the rising of the moon At the rising of the moon At the rising of the moon Let's all dance the dance of freedom At the rising of the moon May the wisdom of the ancients with their messages and signs come shining on our tomorrows with the magic of the times like the star that shone on the wise men like the dawn that's coming soon it's a truth that guides us onwards at the rising of the moon at the rising of the moon at the rising of the moon it's a truth that guides us onwards at the rising of the moon. If we live within our garden, just be tender with our care. Do we understand the meanings or the motives of the fair? Will we stumble through the darkness, trying far too much too soon? Let's all stand up and be counted at the rising of the moon. At the rising of the moon, at the rising of the moon. Stand up and be counted at the rising of the moon At the rising of the moon At the rising of the moon Stand up and be counted at the rising of the moon 
See you all on the other side. Nice one. Uh, I'll bring everyone back on screen just for a final goodbye. Then we will close off the old Zoom machine. And say good night or good morning or whatever time it is for you. And uh, thanks again, everyone. Here's a great referendum and great results and onwards. Take care. Lots of love, everyone. Thanks again. Bless. Bless you. Yeah, I have to press this red end button. I hate doing <laughs> that. It's going to like, boom, we all blow up into outer, we all get, go into outer space. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Good night. Good night. And uh, yeah, th thanks for your help, Sean, and everyone behind the scenes, and then Joe and Red and everyone on you. Thank you. Take care, everyone. See you, aunties, and everyone. Bye. <laughs>